I am en route to a little tiny cabin, little getaway that I'm really excited about, been looking forward to for a few weeks now. I planned it especially for right after Thanksgiving so I can have a little time to myself. I bought four books. Like, I don't know what I'm thinking. I always set my expectations too high, but I like to give myself options because I literally am always working through like four books at once. The theme for this video is going to just present itself over the next less than 24 hours because I'm just gonna bring you guys along my little trip, my little getaway trip, and see what kind of magic happens. I'm just calling in a lot of magical, scrumptious, creative moments. It's gonna be great, guys. I'm so excited. So yeah, toodaloo. Okay, here I am. I've arrived! Oh my god, this is so cute. Look at this place. So cute. This, I'm gonna have the coziest night of my life. Let's go. Oh, and then this is what the outside looks like. I'll show you the outside. Cute. I will be having my morning tea there. First things first, I'm gonna get myself settled in, boil some water for tea. I'm gonna put my phone away. And then I'm gonna just vibe. I'll whip out a book, I'm gonna color, I'm gonna play some music. I downloaded some Alan Watts lectures, and then I'll just be chatting with you guys. Okay, phone is going away. It doesn't actually lock. But you know, it's the effort that counts. Now it's tea time and then I'm gonna go sit outside for the last couple minutes of daylight. Woo! thinking in the car while listening to this um, podcast just about like I feel like as people get older sometimes they have less goals and not in a bad way they sort of just start to like settle into what they already have and I actually really like that idea because what I learned this year in my own experience is that like constantly striving for something or having like in your mind a vision or something that feels so far away can actually really take you out of the present moment and I know for me it's like definitely been the cause of like just like icky feeling suffering just like not being in the present and worry stress all the things kind of like in September of this year I finally made this switch where I just started being really present and working on what I already have and I started to achieve way more because of that and this this trip definitely like aligns with the idea of just being more present and like caring a lot more for nourishing who I am right now knowing that the person I am now is like who is the same person that has everything I want in the future so for the longest time I was differentiating those two people and thinking that who I was right now like wasn't good enough or like had to do something you know far-fetched to get there but when I started to just look at it like day to day, how can I get better? How can I work on something that I love today? It just really changed the energy and I really liked that. So I'm just feeling so pe at peace here because I, it's like the only place I need to be. I feel like that's kind of a divine feeling to just be like, I have nowhere else to be. And because of that, you get to be present. And I think that's kind of beautiful. Back inside, I'm gonna get cozy for a bit. My tea is taking forever to cool down because it's in like a Yeti mug. <laughs> they make those Yetis way too good. Look, I brought cacao. I'm gonna get myself a cacao. Actually, after I drink this tea, and then I'm gonna make a cacao. I'm just gonna be downing so many liquids, basically, while I'm here. And then I'm gonna have, uh, we're gonna try out this jerky, and then we're gonna see where the night takes me. Okay, update. Music is playing on this cute little Bluetooth slash radio, fun. And I'm making soup, making soup, delicious. And I'm going to use this cute little uh, guide that they uh, 
that they provide. I'm gonna set my intention and I'm gonna write it in crayon because why not? And then I have all my books. Those are three of my books. The fourth one is in my bag. And uh, I'm gonna do some of, some drawing and some reading and just gonna vibe it out for a couple hours. So I'll see you then. Hi there. Um, I actually don't even know how much time has passed. Let me find out. Okay, it's probably, I think I was sitting on the side like an hour ago. Anyway, I'm making myself a cacao. I've just been sitting, I've just been sitting here in <laughs> this chair. And it's just so interesting, like when we slow down and are just like have nothing to distract us, like no scrolling, no TV. We just sort of, um, well, I don't know what happens to you, but I get, I kind of sometimes get emotional. I actually cried like a little bit, but in a good way. So I just felt so grateful for everything in my life. And I was just like, wow. I, that's amazing. Like, you know, this is kind of a challenge. Like, out here, being alone is like kind of a challenge in a way. Because I, you know, have family and friends and love my boyfriend so much. And it's really interesting when you're just sitting by yourself and you're like, huh. You just notice everything because it's usually we're distracted and it's so easy to just avoid. I don't know. So that's just something I'm thinking about is like how much we distract ourselves from just sitting with our feelings, good, bad, neutral, whatever. And I, I'm such a, I don't know, an empath, I guess you'd call it. I feel things so deeply. So just being alone, the water is making a lot of noise. Okay. Um, what I was saying is that I think it's really good to take a break, to pause, to just sort of like, yeah, literally just pause and like take away the usual amounts of stimulation that we have going on in our life because it can, too much of it, as we know, can really rob you of whatever is truly present for you. So I think that's just such an important reminder. Like, yeah, of course it's easier and more comfortable to just like continue on with whatever I had going on in life and then just keep going and stay in the same place physically, you know? But, oh my God, this is the best part. Check this out. Ooh, trying to not spill it everywhere. Yeah, long story short, I just think that that's a really good practice is to just pause. I think that's why like, meditation is so powerful because it allows us to slow down and be with our thoughts which is like obvious sort of but sometimes you need those reminders so anyway i just made my delicious cacao Ugh, it smells so so good god i love this stuff it's 5 30 I literally feel like I could go to bed right now because it's dark out and I'm just, yeah, I'm just like sitting with my thoughts, which is nice and fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna drink this cacao and uh, I think I'm gonna do some reading. I brought this like, this book called The Artist's Way, which is about like creativity and like you, like has journal prompts to work on your creative self, I guess. So I'm gonna do that for a little bit. We'll just give you a little look, a little, oh my God. Oh God, timber, okay. I'm just giving you a little look, see it. Just made some water, this is my cacao. I'm chilling here, pulled the shade down just to, I don't know, chill. I made some soup, I nearly burnt my finger off, pouring it into the bowl. And I'm gonna sit here and just keep hanging out. Wow, this quote is so perfect for this channel, guys. It says, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Love that. Here's a good Zen quote for you, one of my favorites. When you wash the dishes, wash the dishes. All that means is to just do the task that you are doing. Don't think about the other tasks that you have to do on the current task. Eating is important, so I'm going to make some pasta. Should we watch it boil? Should we just stand here and watch it boil? And I'm on my third cup of hot beverage. 
So I'd say we're having a 10 out of 10 night so far. Jin Zenji, who's like an OG Zen philosopher writer from Japan, and he says, In the mundane, nothing is sacred, in sacredness, nothing is mundane. And it's a reminder to know that you can make moments sacred if you want them to be. You can make the mundane totally special by your perspective, just by the attention you put on it. And I feel that to be true right now as I just sit and relax and cozy up and I'm just being. I'm doing nothing other than being and I've had ideas come to me and I've been doodling and this is just, you know, I'm just literally doing nothing. But it feels really sacred. It feels really special. And I think we often have resistance to things that are seemingly mundane but might actually be really powerful. And I feel like that's a big part of like, quote unquote, awakening or enlightenment or living a higher purpose, living a virtuous life is to let yourself have sacredness in the seemingly mundane and to acknowledge the resistance that you have to those things. I'm gonna cozy up in bed here, do my Reiki through the iPad, and then, you know, I'm gonna read before and after, and then I'm gonna go to sleep, and then I'm gonna set my alarm for like 6 a.m., 6.30, and then I'll see you then. some tea. <sighs> okay, so I've just read a part of this book, Becoming What You Are, Alan Watts. It's a collection of essays. It just help put into words really what I think this trip that I'm on is really about and what I meant to quote unquote achieve. And at the same time, a really powerful reminder for you. There's an essay in here called The Finger and the Moon. And essentially the point is don't mistake the finger pointing at the moon for the moon itself. And the finger is representative of religion or philosophy or even a psychotherapy, any method of helping you learn something, become more enlightened, whatever that is. And the moon being, you know, whatever they want you to try to understand. And in Zen, often the realization that Zen masters or books or whatever it is is trying to get to you to achieve is supposed to be sort of indescribable, which I agree with. So the point is that eventually you're supposed to get off the raft, right? If you're riding a raft across a river, when you get to the other side, get off the raft and leave the raft behind. Because if you stay on the raft, you'll keep floating and you might get lost and then that defeats the whole purpose of the raft. The raft being the religion, the philosophy, the healing technique. And I think in today's world, we get so wrapped up in staying on the raft, constantly healing, constantly self-improving, that we forget that that method is supposed to be just a bridge and you're supposed to get off and go somewhere. You're supposed to go act and live, right? And I feel like that's what I'm attempting to do here on this trip is to just be here and enjoy 
the fact that I rode the raft and now I can hang out and when I come across another mystery I will hop onto a different bridge and I will continue to inquire but eventually I close the book and I look at reality because if I don't do that I'm not you know that's when religion and philosophy ends up being the cause of problems because we stay stuck in that world and we mistake that small piece of it for the reality itself that it's trying to point at. And this is how Alan describes like what we're pointing at. That fleeting glimpse is the perception that suddenly some very ordinary moment of your ordinary everyday life lived by your very ordinary self just as it is and just as you are that this immediate here and now is perfect and self-sufficient beyond any possibility of description. You know that there is nothing to desire or seek, that no techniques, no spiritual apparatus or belief or discipline is necessary, no system of philosophy or religion. The goal is here. It is this present experience just as it is. That obviously is what the finger was pointing at. Okay like an hour and a half before I leave, maybe a little bit less. So I'm just gonna have some fun. I'm just gonna have some fun. I'm gonna say hi to you from the outside of this window because I thought that that would be cute. <laughs> Fun. I'm gonna take you outside with me now. <sighs> so nice out. Well, it's really cold, but whenever I have a cold, like in my sinuses are kind of stuffed and I go outside, I automatically can breathe. Isn't that amazing? I actually think that's really worth noting. When you're sick and you go outside, you literally feel better automatically. At least that's what happens to me. You know what I think is a really good practice is when you have an urge, you know, like a little inkling to do something, you just do it like this. Glorious, glorious shower. <sighs> Okie dokie, I am packing up and getting ready to go. I'm gonna grab my phone from the lockbox. Hello, cell phone. I'm already overwhelmed by the amount of notifications that I have to go through, but we're not gonna worry about that. Okay, so. 10 out of 10, what a great time. Just packing up a few remaining things. I'm gonna take a couple deep breaths before I totally head out. And I'm just feeling so good. I'm just, I just feel chill. And I'm um, just really glad that I did this. It was, it was really, really nice. I definitely feel like, yeah, time alone is just interesting, especially when you like fully disconnect. But anyway, it was really nice. And I'm, I'm, glad, I, I'm glad I did it. I'm gonna pack up and I'll see you in the car. <sighs> okay, some heat up in here. Okay, I'm ready to go home. Success, thank you, thank you Gerald. Thank you Getaway for an amazing time. And it's not over yet, I got two hours back to Boston to vibe out and then I gotta catch a flight. So yes, thank you for coming along you guys. I'm really, I hope that you enjoyed my little journey. I hope you learned something. I hope you had a laugh or anything in between. And I'm so grateful for you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it with someone. And of course I'm back with weekly wisdom every week. This is Wisdom From Within. Love you guys. Hope you have an amazing day. Bye.